Hey, this is Thomas. Welcome back to Brain Doodles. And within this lesson for building blocks, we're going to take a look at shading, which is just adding some basic lines to an uh, to our shape, uh, as you can see here in our example with the box and also with the circle here. We've added some lines for shading, uh, wherever maybe like the the box lid is coming down and we see some shading there, or maybe the light is hitting up from above from the circle and we get some shading down below. We're also adding some depth, and here we see the triangle has a little bit more of a three-dimensional look. So we can transform, let's say, this box over here, these uh, two boxes. We can add lines to connect them, and then we can transform that square into a box. So let's take a look at these two subjects of shading and depth. Okay, first with shading, we have some things that we want to keep in mind. The uh, the first thing is you know like saying overlapping shapes. So we have the circle and we have a square. Okay. Now if you're using an eraser, that's great. We can end up getting rid of that line. If you don't, don't worry about it. If it if it stays there, it stays there. Uh, but whatever object is in front of the other one, this one usually appears a little bit bigger, and that might add some shading to it. So this starts to have a little bit more emphasis than the one behind. So you know, try to figure out maybe ways in which you can say, you know, whatever we have in the foreground is going to be our emphasis, and then add some shading to the one that's not so important in the background. Okay, shading also can uh, add anchors to um, our shapes, so we can anchor it to the ground. Okay, so instead of maybe just a ball floating. On our paper, that we can, you know, somehow anchor it uh, to the ground. Now, unless you want the ball, you know, feel like it's maybe moving up or going down, and you know, like you create a shadow underneath, you can certainly do something like that, or maybe of like a figure that is, uh, you know, jumping for joy. He's, you know, really happy, and then is coming off the ground, so we can add shading uh, down onto the ground for that. Okay. So there's a lot of things you can end up doing, and not just with circles, but then also with squares or, or rectangles. Maybe you have some, you know, information over here that's really important, and you know, adding a drop shadow to that can really help to bring that off the page even more. Okay, so now let's take a look at adding depth. When adding depth to a shape, such as you know, like a circle or a square. All we're doing is we're kind of like uh, you know kind of crushing those down to where the circle then becomes an ellipse, okay? And the the square we might kind of you know kind of skew that a little bit, and we have that kind of moving off, you know, this direction, all right, and kind of squashed down. So how do these start to be transformed into three-dimensional objects of adding some depth? Well, from here, all we do is adding lines. And remember, we just this is one of our, our basic things. We have the curved line, we have the straight line. And so now the ellipse helps to become a cylinder by adding just some you know curve, uh, curved and straight lines. And then we can add shading from that to where we can really add some depth to the inside of the container and to the outside of the container and anchoring it to the ground. And same thing with the square. We could draw some straight lines straight down and then connect those lines with some other straight lines. And also one more for the inside. All right. So this was really simple. We started with kind of a skewed square and then just drew some lines straight down. What you want to do, practice. Practice, practice, practice. All right. So um, let's take a look at uh, maybe some other objects that we can end up drawing. Like as far as the triangle is concerned, we can add kind of a uh, a curved bottom to it with some shading, with some kind of you know kind of curved lines to it. So this kind of gives a little bit more of a three-dimensional feel to the to the triangle, to where now this becomes a cone. Okay. And the ball, if we just drew the ball itself, remember a ball on the, the, the side that's facing you comes a little bit closer, so it kind of curves around. We can kind of draw a light line there, and then we could end up uh, putting our lines for shading and lines on the ground for shadow. So now the circle is transformed into a ball. It has a little bit more three-dimensional look to it. And once again, not always necessary. This just helps to bring the, the items off of your page. 
All right, so let's take a look and seeing how we can combine these to creating a, a very simple object. Okay, let's say that we have to do a book review, maybe like on Tom Sawyer or something like that. And so we want to do a book, but we don't want to just do a basic book. We want to do a three dimensional book. And, you know, because maybe on top of all of our book reviews, we're going to put this little icon of a book. All right. So, uh, what I really suggest is maybe starting out with a pencil. You can do this with a pen. I'm going to show you a shortcut after we do the longhand version of it. Okay. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start out with a couple of rectangles. Okay. And you'll notice that I'm kind of drawing at an angle here. I'm not drawing straight, straight across the page. Okay. And I'm just going to draw two rectangles out. And this one, because this one is closer to us, is going to be a little bit larger than the one behind. But if they're the same size, don't worry about it. Remember that P word? Yeah, practice. Now all I'm going to do is connect the top corners to each other and then the bottom corners to each other. Okay, so now we have this three-dimensional box. But a book, of course, doesn't have these perfect straight lines. They have curved lines, like on the spine, the, the back edge of the book, where you see the little title or some like little designs or something like that. You know, so we're going to add some curve lines to that left hand side. And we're going to also add some curves to the right hand side. And this is where you know, like the pages come across. Okay. And so we have the top of the book cover and the bottom back cover here. So I'm going to just, you know, kind of emphasize those lines a little bit more because if we have just a pen, we're going to emphasize those lines so we don't see the lines in here so much and maybe um, you know, we put a little squiggly mark here for the title of the book. We could certainly write that out if we wanted to. Okay, and then we can add some lines for shadow and shading. We can connect this to the ground. We can anchor it to the ground. Okay, so here we have our three-dimensional book. And once again, if you're using a pencil, then certainly you could go in and erase those lines if you wanted to and then add that title back in. Okay, so there you have the book. All right. Now, shortcut for those of you that are using a pen, and this is going to take some practice. Remember how I started out with the box. I kind of had this line uh, angles off to the side, kind of skewing the square, okay, or the rectangle, kind of pushing the bottom off over to the, maybe to the right-hand side. And then I'm just going to draw some lines straight down, okay, or you can draw curved lines down from the top. And then all you have to do is connect those, bump and bump. Maybe add some lines for pages, some lines for shadows, anchor it to the ground with some more lines, and guess what? You have your book in a few simple steps, but once again, this is going to take some practice. So this is how you can use shadow and shading to adding emphasis and interest to your, uh, your objects that you're going to be creating.